Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and you've come to video number one of the Basket Weave Diamond Throw. In this video, we're going to be covering rows 1 through 17. Okay, to begin this project, let me tell you a few things you're going to need. Um, for the throw only, you will need seven scans of the Red Heart with Love. This is the recommended yarn. Of course, you may use whatever worsted weight yarn you choose, but just know that the results might differ slightly depending on the thickness of the yarn. Okay, the um, these particular um, scans have 370 yards or 338 meters. Um, they're seven ounces. This is 100% acrylic. It's actually quite a nice yarn. Um, you also are going to need a size J or 10 crochet hook. This is also 6.00 millimeter. Okay, and I also recommend that you have a yarn needle for hiding the loose ends once we finish. Okay, the other thing you're going to need, I highly recommend that you download the pattern. You can download the pattern. It's free. This is um, courtesy of Red Heart Yarns. Um, you can find this pattern at www.redheart.com and you can search Basket Weave Diamond Throw and Pillow in their search bar um, and that should take you there pretty well. Or you can even just Google uh, Basket Weave Diamond and Basket Weave Diamond and a throw and pillow and that should also pull it up. Now should you want to make the pillow also um, be sure that you purchase three extra um, scans of yarn. Um, Ten scans will make the complete set. But in, these vi in this video series we're only going to be covering the throw. Okay let's go ahead and begin. I am using my larger crochet hook which is a size J and the first thing we're going to do is chain 153. Okay we begin with our slip knot give it a tug and we're going to go to 153 I just want to give you a little helpful hint for how to count that many stitches I usually count by fives and do five chains reposition and then six seven eight nine ten and reposition again 11 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 in this way, it's easy to stop and pause should you need to, if someone asks you a question or distracts you in any way. That way you don't totally lose your count. So go ahead and chain 153. Now that we've completed our chain of 153 chains, we're going to go ahead to row number one, which says to single crochet in each, I'm sorry, single crochet in second chain from hook and in each chain across. So here's the first chain and the second chain. We're going to go ahead and single crochet. And I just crochet in one of the arms of the V or one this side here that's showing um, of the chain stitch all the way across. You can work in the back bump if you'd like, but I think you might find it a little more difficult um, for this pattern because when we come back around, we are going to work in the remaining chain. Okay, so go ahead and work those uh, single crochets. When you finish, you should have 152 single crochets. At the end of row one, we're going to turn. We're going to chain one. Now the next two rows we are going to do is called the front ridge or the low front ridge. And in these two rows, we're going to work the first row in this loop only, the front, front loop only, and then we will turn and then we'll work the remainder um, the, row three in the remaining loop, which will be th the loop right here. Okay, so just wanted to be a little clear on that. And to start, we are going to skip the first stitch only for this low front ridge, and we're going to work a slip stitch in working only in the front loop of the next stitch. Okay, so just slip stitch in each stitch all the way across the row. Okay. One more thing I should mention before I finish this um, second row is if your um, piece is a little curly, a little curvy like this, please don't worry about that. Now if it's super, super tight after the next row, you may have to go back and rework 
your turning chain to be a little less tight. If you tend to crochet very tightly on your chains, you may want to bump up a size to maybe a size K just for the turning, I'm sorry, just for the um, foundation chain. But if it's just a little curvy like this, you're going to be fine after we work this next row. It's going to straighten out. In fact, I have to show you, it's already straightening out for me. Okay? So just wanted to let you know that information to ease your mind. I've worked my slip stitch all the way across. So I'm going to go ahead and work the slip stitch in the last single crochet. I'm not working in the turning chain. And we're going to chain one, turn, or turn, chain one, however you prefer to do that. And now we're going to begin row number three, which is simply to single crochet in the remaining loop or the free loop of the of the row that we just finished. So working in the loop that remains, we're going to work single crochets all the way across. And just a note for those of you who are conscious of the stitch count, we are going to work in each single crochet. So even though we've skipped the first single crochet of the of row number two with the slip stitches, we are going to single crochet in each stitch across here on this row, row number three. So that's going to keep our stitch count constant. So at the end of this row, you should have 100 and 52 single crochets worked in that free loop. And then out, let me just show you a preview. This is the way when we finish, we're going to have this little ridge that's going to be left to give us um, a border for the texture we're going to be crocheting. So I've worked single crochet in the remaining loop all the way across and the last stitch I'm going to work in the last single crochet. I'm not working in the turning chain or anything like that. Okay, now we're ready to start row four. We're going to turn, we're going to chain one, and this is the beginning of what we're calling the cable pattern or the cable stitch. Okay, this is a little bit trickier, so I will go slow and repeat a few times for you to see this. Okay, we're going to begin by working through both loops now, single crochet in the first stitch. We're going to chain three, one, two, three. Now we're going to skip the next two stitches and we're going to single crochet in the next stitch. Okay, now we're going to turn and we're going to work in these three chains. We're going to turn our work and just working along one side like we did before, work one single crochet in each of the three chains. That's one, two, three. And then we're going to slip stitch in that first single crochet. Slip, stitch. Okay, now we're going to turn again. And this is with the front side facing again. And we are going to single crochet in those two stitches that we skipped. One, two. Okay, so that's the first uh, cable. So we're going to do that all the way across the row. I will do that a few more times with you. Chain three, one two, three. Now we, we've already used this stitch, so we're going to skip the next two single crochets. One, two, single crochet in the next one. Turn to work in the chains, and we're going to single crochet in each of the three chains. One, two, three, and then slip stitch in that single crochet. Okay, and then turn again and work a single crochet in those two stitches that we skipped. Okay, now let's do it one more time. One, two, three chains. Skip the next two stitches. These are the next two stitches that haven't been used. Single crochet in the next. Now turn to work in the chains. One, two, three single crochets. Slip stitch. And sometimes it may help to pull back this a little bit. Slip stitch in that single crochet. Turn again. And then single crochet in the two stitches that we skipped. One, two. And I'll show you what, what this should look like. It should look like this, which is I think is kind of a cool stitch. I've really enjoyed working this stitch over the years. Okay, I'm going to do this one more time, and I'm going to show you a different way that you can use to turn. One, two, 
three chains. Now I don't show this to you to confuse you or anything, but just so that you don't end up with a twisted mess down here by continuing, continuing to turn in the same direction. Okay, so we're going to skip the next two. Single crochet, and we turn just like we've been doing. Single crochet in those three chains. Two, three, and then slip stitch. Now what I like to do is I bring my yarn to the other side and then I turn back towards the opposite direction and then I work two single crochets, one in each of the stitches that were skipped. Let me show that to you one more time. And again, you can do it either way. Chain three, skip the next two unworked stitches single crochet in the next stitch, turn, single crochet in the three chains, one stitch in each chain. I'm just working on one loop there and then working through both loops, slip stitch. Now I can turn this way again or I could bring my yarn around my hook like so and then turn this direction and that way I don't get a lot of uh, a lot of tangled mess at the end. Okay, then sing, single crochet in those two stitches. Okay, so either way you do it, the stitches work out the same. So go ahead and work this all the way across the row. Okay, I've worked the cable stitch all the way across and then I get to the last stitch and I just single crochet in the last stitch like so. Okay, beginning row five, we're going to be working behind the cables. You're going to chain one, one single crochet in the first single crochet. Now we're going to be working behind the cables themselves. Okay, one single crochet in the next stitch. And then I want you to work two single crochets behind the next or in the next single crochet. It might be a little tricky to see. I'm going to do this again. So behind the next cable, I'm going to work one single crochet and I'm going to pull this back, the cable back a little bit and then work two single crochets in that space. One single crochet in the next single crochet and as I pull the cable back a little bit, two single crochets behind the next. I want to stop and take a look at this and try to explain. Okay, behind each cable you should have three stitches. So you have one single crochet behind that first single crochet. This is the one that we skipped when we formed the cable. And then two behind the next. One, then two. And this way the stitch count does stay constant. It does stay 152 stitches. Okay, so one single crochet in the next stitch and two single crochets in the next single crochet. One, and as I pull back this cable a little bit, two single crochets. So go ahead and work that all the way across the row. Okay, work row five all the way across to the end and it's get a little hard to see this last stitch because this is right, way back from row four right here, but there is a single crochet. Go ahead and put that in the last stitch like so. Okay, now we're going to turn and for row row six and seven we are simply going to repeat rows two and three. I'll do a quick review of that. We chain one, we're going to skip the first stitch. Now we're only going to be working in the front loops. Again, this is the same ridge that we did here. Okay, so we're just going to work slip stitches, slip stitch all the way across, working in the front loop only. Okay, so go ahead and do that all the way across. After working the slip stitches all the way across, I'm going to turn, chain one, and I'm going to work in the remaining loop only of those single crochets and just single crochet in that remaining loop all the way across. Also notice I, I did not work in the turning chain and, and this end will be fine. 
Okay, so go ahead and single crochet in that remaining loop all the way across the row. Row 7 ends with the last single crochet worked in the last remaining loop of those single crochets. And I'm going to turn and this is what you should have at this stage. Okay, we have low front ridge, nice cable stitch, and another low front ridge. Okay, now we begin the basket weave. And be be as we begin this row, we're going to chain two. And what I'm going to show you now, you're going to do for rows 8, 9, and 10. So this is starting on row 8, and you're going to do this for the next three rows, okay? So I'm going to not work in this first stitch. I'm going to work a front post double crochet around the second single crochet. And yes, it is possible to do post stitches around single crochets. I get that question a lot. Um, it's not as comfortable or as easy as in a double crochet, but your hook, as you see, fits around that small stitch, and you just complete the double crochet. Okay, we're going to do that three times. That's one, two, and three. That's the third front post double crochet. If you've never done a post stitch before, um, you're simply wrapping the hook around the body of the stitch. You're not going in through the top loops, you're just wrapping your hook around. Okay, I've completed three front post double crochets. Now I'm going to do three back post double crochets, and that's coming in the back door, I like to say, and kind of tying the stitch like you normally would, completing it in the back. So we come around the back door, around the front, and out the back again. Okay, so now I've done three back post double crochets. Now we're just going to alter that all the way across. Three front post double crochets. And you can see how easy this can be working in those single crochets. And then three back post double crochets. Okay, so we're just alternating three in the front three in the back. And we're going to do this all the way across the row. Okay, after working three front post double crochets and three back post double crochets alternating all the way across, I end by working a half double crochet in the last stitch by working through the top loops. Okay, now if your, your stitches didn't come out evenly or if you have too few or too many and they didn't come out evenly at the end it could be that you've skipped stitches or perhaps didn't do three in the front three in the back with the post stitches across so you might want to do a visual quick visual check to see where you may have gone wrong if you did okay otherwise we're just going to go forward okay we're going to go ahead and turn and beginning row number nine we're going to chain two. We're doing the same thing that we did for row number eight. So I'm going to go ahead and work rows um, nine and ten, which is the same as row eight, and that is after the chain two, we're going to do three front post double crochets. And then we're going to do three back post double crochets just working them coming in the back door there. Okay, so three front post double crochets, three back post double crochets all the way across. Go ahead and complete row nine and row 10 in that manner. At the end of row 10, just like on row eight and nine, end with a half double crochet worked in the turning chain. And I wanna show you what you should have at this stage. Okay, we have one, two, three rows of the basket weave. Now we're going to start with rows, with row number 11. And what I'm going to show you next, you're going to do three rows. You're going to do this for row 11, 12, and 13. Okay, you're going to chain two. First you turn with the, okay, if we have the backside facing for this time around. Um, but for when you do row number 12, you'll have the front side facing, and then row 13, you'll have the back side facing. 
Okay, this is the row in which we reverse the basket weave. Okay, we've been working front post and then well, three front posts and then three back posts. Now we're going to reverse it. If you have a front post, you're going to work a back post. So you're going to work three. You're going to begin each row with three back post double crochets. And then you're going to work three front post double crochets. Now this row number 11 is the only row that you do the opposite of what you see. When you go through with rows 12 and 13, you are going to be doing, um, like if you see a front post, you, you work a front post. If you see a back post, you work a back post. You're going to try to match what you've already done on rows 12 and 13, but on row 11 is where you actually reverse it. So see we have three front posts, so we're going to do three back post double crochets. And then we do three front post double crochets. And we do this all the way across the row and then work your half double crochet in the turning chain. Now as you come back around um, for the next round, you're going to be starting, I'm sorry, for the next row, you'll actually be starting with the back post that will look like this. So you'll just work three back posts and then you work three front posts, three back posts and then three front posts all the way across for the next two rows as well. And you can already see the basket weave effect coming into play here. Okay, so go ahead and do the next three rows. After completing row 13, I've turned and I want to give you a view of what you should have at this point. Okay, in regards to the basket weave, you have the first three rows here, the second three rows here, and now we're going to do the next three rows. And we're going to chain two, and the directions say for rows 14 through 16, repeat rows 8 through 10. 8 through 10 are the rows here, and that states for front post, double crochet in the first three or well, in the next three stitches and then we're going to back post in the next three stitches okay and we're going to repeat that all the way across and this is another one of those rows where we're reversing what we had done in the previous row so we're going to do three front post double crochets and then we work three back post double crochets and go ahead and do this all the way across the row okay at the end of row 14 we're going to work a we're going to work a half double crochet in the chain two we're going to turn and then we're going to repeat this um, two more times all the way across. At the end of row 16, we work our half double crochet in that turning chain. And let's take a look at where we are now. Okay, so we should have three sets of three rows each of the basket weave. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn and we're going to work the last row of this video segment. We're going to chain one. This is row 17 and it says to single crochet in each chain or in each stitch across and then turn. So we're going to just do that as it says. Simply single crochet working through the top two loops of each stitch all the way across. Okay. Okay, I've ended row 17. Notice that my last stitch was worked in the last single crochet. Do not work in the turning chain. If you do work in the turning chain, you'll be adding stitches and that would not be good. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn and show you the front side as we end the first video. Okay, we have worked the low front ridge, the cable stitch, another low front ridge, and then we've worked nine rows of basket weave and then the single crochet row to discontinue the basket weave. Go ahead and join me in video number two where we'll continue on with starting with row number 18. God bless.